All right. Well, it is 1102, at least where we are in the world. I know some of you are joining us from quite a bit around the globe. Uh, so welcome. We are going to get started. Uh, thank you all for being here. My name is Helen Schroeder. I'm sure you've seen that pop up in some of your emails over the last few weeks. I'm the marketing coordinator at Sigma Assessment Systems, and I will be co-facilitating your webinar today with my colleague Shruti Kumar here. So for those of you who are new to Sigma, we are a professional services firm that does talent development, succession planning, and psychological assessments for organizations who are looking to build their internal talent pools. Sigma has been in business for over 50 years, so as a company, we have a lot of experience, and we're excited to bring some of that experience to you today when we talk about how to identify critical roles. So we have about 60 minutes together. For the first 45 minutes or so, Shruti will walk you through the contents of the webinar to introduce critical roles to you. And as we go, feel free to post questions in the Q&A box at the bottom of Zoom. Uh, we will be collecting those and addressing them at the end of the webinar. We'll leave some time for that. And you're also welcome to ask questions once the Q&A gets going, if that sparks any more ideas for you. Um, we'll also leave our email with you. So if there's anything we don't get into the webinar, please don't hesitate to reach out to us after. We love having these conversations with leaders about how you can be growing your team. Uh, so it would be our pleasure to keep in touch with you. Uh, this webinar will be recorded. So you will have access to the recording after the fact. I think it'll be emailed in the follow-up that gets sent tomorrow. However, we will not be sharing the slides. So you'll see everything, uh, but we won't be sending the, the PowerPoint deck out to you. Uh, all right, now without any further ado, let me introduce you to my colleague, Shruti, so that you know what an incredible facilitator we have with us today. Shruti is pursuing her PhD in industrial and organizational psychology at Western University. Her areas of research expertise include performance management, work design, and equity and inclusion. At Sigma, Shruti applies her expertise to develop evidence-based content on organizational best practices, such as this webinar that you're going to be seeing today. Uh, so you are in good hands, and I will pass it off to Shruti now to start walking you through our content. All right, thank you, Helen, and hello, everyone. I am so excited to be speaking with you today about critical roles and succession planning. In this webinar, I will cover the basics of succession planning, how to identify critical roles, and tips for navigating challenges in this process. I will also review the tools and templates that we have that are free for you to access. Now, before I dive into critical roles, I wanna chat briefly about the value of succession planning. I'm gonna discuss critical roles specifically within the context of succession planning, but the information that I provide today is also relevant for other strategic plans or talent development plans. In fact, talent development is an important component of succession planning. So I'd like to start us off with a question for the group. Does your company have a formal succession planning process? I'll give you a second to answer that poll. All right, so it looks like quite a few of you have an informal, uh, meaning an undocumented succession planning process. Um, some of you have had a few replacements in mind. Some of you haven't thought about succession at all. Some of you also do have a formal process, which is great to hear. So succession planning is extremely valuable because it allows organizational leaders to develop and act on a long-term plan that's in line with the organization's vision and values. Sigma's approach to succession planning is a long-term and structured process. Identifying critical roles is only the first step in this process. We use a six-step process, and I'll cover this in the upcoming slides. Now, let's make sure that we're on the same page when we think about succession planning. This is not just about having a list of adequate or convenient candidates who might replace more senior employees. 
It's a process to identify the next generation of your leaders who have the potential to fill key roles when your current personnel moves on. This provides your company with a roadmap to ensure the continuity of your operations when changes occur. It also allows time for the future leaders to develop their knowledge and skills so that they are prepared when the time comes to step into their new roles. Now, this process does require time and effort, and some organizations might view it as an unnecessary investment of limited company resources. However, turnover is inevitable, and when employees eventually retire or unexpectedly leave, organizations then rely on replacement hiring, reacting to immediate needs in an ad hoc manner. With the succession planning process, you can take a more proactive and intentional approach, preparing your best internal candidates for a role before they are even needed. Through succession planning, organizations adopt a strategic and proactive approach. But for this to work effectively for your organization, your succession program also requires structure. Again, this does require investment of time, money, and effort, but it also offers you many valuable benefits. For instance, a structured plan involves providing employees chosen for succession with development goals and resources for their growth. This demonstrates your organization's investment in your employees, empowering them to be fully prepared for their new roles and helping them to keep accountable to their own growth. Developing your talent pool before it is needed also helps in retaining organizational knowledge and increases your organizational resiliency as your business can anticipate, prepare for, and adapt to change, especially in a competitive labor market. Now, a succession plan with structure also facilitates communication and transparency. Employees who are not selected for, for succession, but who understand how the process works, view it as a fair process and remain engaged in their roles. When opportunities for advancement are provided based on objective decisions, organizations can then also maintain their legal defensibility and avoid inadvertently contributing to workplace inequality. Clearly, there are many valuable benefits to a structured succession process. Now, as you can see here, Sigma has a six step succession planning process. Our focus today is on this first step, but I'll briefly guide you through the overall process. Now, the first step is to identify which key positions you should include in your plan. Essentially, you need to identify which roles have the greatest impact on your company's performance and would also be the most difficult to replace. Now, at this point, selecting the right positions to focus on is extremely important for the overall outcome of your succession plan. In the next step, you would build your success profiles by describing the competencies that are necessary to perform each critical role. Following this, you would consider potential candidates for each critical role and nominate your successors. In the next step, you would identify each candidate's development needs to help them prepare for the role. Then, once you have identified key areas for development, you can coach your candidates to build a development plan and work towards skill attainment. The final component of the succession process is to track candidate progress boost their engagement and quantify their success. Now, this is not actually the end of the process, but it's a great opportunity to reflect on the progress made so far and address any remaining skill, gap, skill gaps. Following this general structure can help you to add objectivity to your succession process. Now, for the rest of the presentation, I'll be focusing on the first step. So a lot of companies come into this process wanting to create a succession plan for the entire organization. However, depending on your company's size, this is not always realistic. An important part of succession planning is thinking about which roles are critical to keep the organization afloat during times of change. These critical roles are typically those that have the greatest impact on your organization's performance. 
Now, keep in mind, we are identifying critical roles within the specific context of succession planning. What this means is that there may be roles that you intuitively understand as extremely important, um, but they might not be identified as a critical role for succession, or at least perhaps not within the first round of succession planning. Critical roles may also evolve over time. Generally, these roles include executive, management, and other leadership positions, as well as linchpin roles in technical, IT, or administrative departments. Now, it's really important at this stage to think about who has invaluable information and who would be difficult to replace. What this means is that you don't want to focus your attention only on the roles at the top of the hierarchy it's very likely that you have critical roles throughout your organizational hierarchy. Make sure that you don't have any blind spots due to your familiarity with certain roles or areas. Take the time to learn more and really think through this step. Now, once you have decided on these critical roles, you can prioritize them in your organization's succession plan. Don't underestimate the value of identifying critical roles. To drive home the value of critical roles, I'm going to go over a hypothetical case study. Now meet Jane. Jane was a high performing employee in a junior project management role. Specifically, Jane would identify project objectives, create project plans and timelines, review the resources required for project success, monitor progress, and communicate with the project's team clients, and other stakeholders. Now, Jane had been at her company for a few years, and she eventually managed projects that brought in a lot of revenue for the organization. Her role involved a complex mix of interpersonal and technical skills, and also involved a high, high degree of adaptability, responsibility, and institutional knowledge. Jane was initially really happy in her role, but she eventually felt that she was not being valued by her organization. She noticed that she would do well in her performance reviews, but was always passed over for promotions. In fact, before Jane joined the company, the leaders of the company had implemented a succession plan which involved identifying critical roles. However, they focused their attention on other roles that were more senior, as well as roles that were on the sales team. Jane's role was overlooked. Now, Jane eventually decided to leave the company, taking her vital organizational knowledge with her. She also left a talent gap, not only for her own role, but also for the more senior project management role, because it no longer had a strong succession candidate available. The leadership team realized very quickly how critical this role really was, and they then had to rely on a costly hiring process. The external hire, once they joined, needed time to adjust to their new role, and this transition had a significant impact on workplace flow and productivity. As you can see, overlooking Jane's critical role had a negative impact on this hypothetical organization. Now, I wanna highlight that there is a difference between a critical person and a critical role. Many organizations have critical people who wear multiple hats and tend to, create, uh, tend to complete a variety of tasks that are essential for keeping the business running. You might identify a role as critical because the current employee in that role is so valuable to your organization. So in this case, Jane was a critical person whose role became a critical role over time due to her talent. Critical people can certainly help guide you in identifying the roles that are critical for your organization. However, keep in mind that the purpose of succession planning is to prepare individuals for stepping into positions rather than trying to promote or hire exact replicas of the current job holder. Now that we've covered potential consequences of overlooking critical roles, Let's discuss some of the benefits of identifying them. Now, some of these benefits might resonate more with you than others. For instance, a major benefit is that it can help you, um, it can help your organization in prioritizing your succession planning efforts. 
Beyond this, other specific benefits include things such as developing a better understanding of your company's operations, thinking strategically about your employees, recognizing roles that have a strong impact or require unique knowledge, recognizing roles that might become vacant soon, and noticing trends in your external and internal candidate availability. By establishing a summary of critical positions in your organization, you can then kickstart your succession planning process. This involves more long-term benefits, such as making strategic investments in your employees' growth, being able to confidently fill vacancies with your best talent, retaining valuable organizational knowledge, and improving your overall organizational resiliency. You need to ensure that you gain a thorough understanding of what the critical roles for your organization are, and this can be a challenging task. So far, I have discussed the value of identifying critical roles and the consequences of blind spots. Now, I'll move on to helping you understand just how to identify critical roles. First, I'd like to turn to the group and get some insight on how many of you are in organizations that have already identified your critical roles. So take a second to fill out this poll. All right, so a few of you do have a documented list, um, which is amazing. Um, a majority also have a general idea, um, and some uh, do not have a shared understanding of which roles are critical. So fortunately, I'm here to guide you through how to identify critical roles and also give you some tools to support you in this process. Now, Sigma's critical role identification questionnaire can help you to pinpoint the positions that are most valuable for your operations within your specific area or your specific team. You might have an idea based on a gut assessment as to what these critical roles are. So leaders and senior managers might be immediately jumping to your mind. However, it's important to take a broad approach and look for linchpin roles across all levels. Be exhaustive in this step to avoid blind spots and mistakes. Once you have a list, our evaluation process will help you in reducing this list to the truly most critical positions for your first round of succession planning. Now we use five specific criteria. I'll go into each of these in more detail in the upcoming slides. So this is what our critical role identification questionnaire looks like. Helen will drop a link in the chat and you can download the template now. We will spend the next several minutes walking through the template together. So if you'd like, you can follow along and fill out the template for your team as we go. So on the leftmost column, you would list each role that you are considering on your specific team. Now, you can create a broad list of potential critical positions, and the questionnaire will help you to narrow them down into a more manageable number of positions. For those of you who are filling this out as we go along, you can list just one or two positions for now and then come back later to add more so that you're not frantically trying to complete the questionnaire while we go through the slides. Now, keep in mind that you want to consider the position description rather than focusing on the person currently in the role. So list the job titles rather than the current job holders' names. As we've talked about previously, strong employees often tend to take on additional responsibilities outside of their role, but you want to base your evaluation on the criticality of their core functions. 
Once you've listed the roles, you're going to rate each position on the criteria in columns two to six. Now, don't fill this out just yet, as I will discuss each of these criteria in more detail in the next few slides. So for each of them, you'll be providing a rating from one to five, where one represents not true of this role and five represents extremely true of this role. As you score each position, the number in the total column will auto-populate. You can use this number to decide which roles are critical. Then you can indicate those critical roles by adding a star in the final column. Let's discuss these criteria in more detail now. So first off, we have urgency. This refers to how likely it is that a role is going to be vacant soon. Based on your past conversations with your employees, as well as their eligibility to retire, indicate how quickly you anticipate needing to fill that role. Now, roles where the employee is planning to stay for more than five years can be considered low urgency, whereas roles where the employee is planning to leave within three years or sooner would be considered more urgent. Be sure to take into consideration that an employee could be offered an opportunity elsewhere. Now, let's say, for example, that you've identified one of your administrative positions as a potential critical role, and you know that the employee currently in the role is relatively new to the company, and they've also shared their desire to stay on. In that case, you can rate this role as low urgency. Of course, you can't always know for sure how soon a role might be vacant, but you can take your best guess. Next, we have impact, which refers to the extent to which a vacancy would affect your organization. Impactful roles are those which allow businesses to operate as usual. So in other words, these are your gatekeepers, your task completers, and your decision makers. Impactful roles may not always be the most obvious ones. So make sure that you take the time to consider whether an overlooked position that's lower down in the organization's hierarchy might actually be a critical point of support. In the case study that we discussed earlier, the junior project management role could have been considered a critical role, especially because of how important it was for business operations. After that, you can consider consider whether the roles you listed require any specialized skills or knowledge in order to be successful. Now, it can be really easy to overlook specialized abilities that are required for roles when you have strong employees who are doing their jobs really well. For example, consider a software management role that involves a wide scope of responsibilities and intimate knowledge of the soft software that is uniquely used by your organization. Let's say that the current employee in this role has been with your company for a long time, so it's really easy for them to tackle their day-to-day -day tasks. However, really, they have actually built their expertise over time, and it, their role does involve specialized abilities. Now, understanding the level of skill needed for a role does more than indicate how critical that role is. It's also important information that will also be used later to identify qualified succession candidates, set development goals, and recruit or onboard if hiring externally. Next, you're going to evaluate how long it would take for an internal succession candidate to become ready to fill the role. Internal candidates for, for succession are invaluable, as this allows you to retain organizational knowledge and can allow for more seamless role transitions. Roles where you will have multiple succession candidates ready within the next one to three years can be considered lower urgency. On the other hand, roles where you don't have many candidates and the ones that you do have won't be ready for at least another, another five years would be considered higher urgency. Now, I just want to briefly mention that the column total specifically for this internal talent criterion is an indicator of your succession bench. 
The succession bench is a valuable tool for monitoring and managing leadership pipelines. We won't spend time reviewing that today, but if you're interested in using the succession bench template, Helen will drop a link in the chat for you to download the form fillable PDF. Please also feel free to email us if you have any, any questions as you're filling this out. <clears throat> now, relying on external hiring to fill critical role, roles leaves you at the mercy of the labor market, and it may be less cost effective than internal hiring. However, some cases will inevitably require you to look beyond your organization, so it's important to know in advance just how difficult it would be to fill your critical role with external candidates. Now, higher scores would indicate a greater difficulty in finding and training external hires, and they also, it also suggests a stronger need for succession planning and internal talent development. For example, perhaps there is a competitive labor market for a specific role or less applicants with the specific experience that you are looking for. In that case, you can consider junior employees who are good candidates for succession, including employees who might require longer term development. <clears throat> Now, the final step in filling out the critical role identification questionnaire is to mark which roles you identify as critical. Roles with high scores indicate a greater need for succession based on all of the criteria that we have discussed so far. So at this point, if you are wondering about a minimum threshold, you might wanna consider using about 16 to 20 as a default cutoff for critical roles. These are the roles that will be urgent, impactful, specialized, and with little internal or external talent available. You can also set your threshold as lower or higher. Now, the lower you set your threshold, the more proactive or risk adverse your succession planning process will be. <clears throat> now, sometimes you will have more roles starred than you can realistically work on at once. So in this case, we would recommend getting together as a leadership team and discussing which roles to prioritize initially. Starting small will make the process easier to manage and improve your likelihood of creating a successful succession plan. It will also give you the chance to learn and gain insights before expanding the scope of your plan. Then you can refer back to this questionnaire later on to determine who will be in your second or even third round of succession planning. Now let's move on to, to some tips on navigating challenges and identifying critical roles. First, let's do another poll. So what potential mistakes do you anticipate your company might make in identifying critical roles? Now, the mistakes included on this poll are some common mistakes that we have seen based on Sigma's work with clients. Identifying critical roles may seem simple in theory, but organizations are unique and complex. There's not always a simple answer, and it can be really easy to overlook, overlook certain considerations. All right, so a wide range of potential mistakes. Um, the majority of you said only responding to urgent needs. That's a big one for sure. Not realizing the degree of skills or knowledge required, as well as the other ones. So we'll be going over um, these mistakes and how to navigate them in more detail. All right, so as I mentioned, given the complexity of organizations, and also because you might be facing uncertainty or time pressures, it can be really easy to rely on gut instincts when assessing critical roles. 
However, keep in mind that the first step of identifying these roles is foundational to the outcomes of your succession process. The questionnaire has specific criteria for you to rate, and this can help you in making objective decisions. In any case, it's still really easy to make errors at this point, especially if you are going through a succession process for the first time. Let's go through each of these common mistakes. Now, first, you may tend to focus on executive positions as critical roles. However, remember that critical roles can be lower in the organizational hierarchy than you might expect. It's possible that you may be overlooking a key, key player who is extremely important for your operations, such as someone in an administrative or IT role. Now, keep in mind that at this stage, you can create a broad list of potential critical positions, and the critical role identification questionnaire will then help you to narrow those down into a more manageable number of positions. A related mistake is overlooking roles that require complex skills or unique knowledge based on your blind spots. Of course, when you have strong employees who are really good at their jobs, it can be really easy to overlook the skills that go into their, into their roles. I recommend that you spend some time talking to your employees to get a first-hand perspective of their roles. Remember, there are other criteria that we'll be using in identifying critical roles, so, that you, so you wanna make sure that you are being inclusive at this stage when you are considering potential critical roles. Now, the next mistake is not making time to plan for important roles in advance because you are so focused on urgently filling vacancies as needed. By, reacting, uh, by reactively responding to needs in an ad hoc manner, you might be creating more organizational disruption than you realize. I would encourage you to take on a more proactive and intentional approach to help prepare your candidates before they are even needed. With a proactive approach, you can make well thought out, valid, and also efficient decisions. This also ensures that you are acting in line with your organization's vision and values rather than relying on convenient options. Now, evaluating the difficulty in filling roles may be more challenging than expected. There are a number of questions that you can reflect on or research to help you in assessing these criteria. So for internal talent, who do you have currently available who might be able to fill that role? How long would it take to prepare those candidates? For external talent, I would encourage you to do a quick Google search. So how many candidates are available for positions like the ones you are looking to fill? What is your average demand in terms of salary and benefits, and can you match those expectations? Would your organization be a competitive employer for these candidates? Lastly, how difficult would it be to hire and also onboard them? Spending the time thinking through these questions will greatly benefit you in the long term. Finally, this last mistake has implications for identifying critical roles, but also reflects a typical issue in broader succession planning approaches. Essentially, when creating succession plans, we want to focus on the roles themselves rather than trying to replace or replicate people using a cookie cutter approach. I touched on this previously, but we can discuss this ag again now. Now, you might identify a role as critical because the employee in the role is so valuable to your organization. However, as we talked about, keep in mind that the purpose of succession planning is to prepare individuals for stepping into your critical positions. If you previously had a critical person in a critical role, this doesn't mean that the next individual needs to be a cookie cutter replica of them. Looking ahead a little bit, you might also find it difficult to create a succession plan for those critical superheroes who seem to do it all. This could be a sign that their role needs to be broken down into two or more distinct critical positions. 
This will not only help you in creating a clear succession plan, but can also help your organization in avoiding a catastrophic loss of talent should this one superhero become burnt out or decide to leave your company. All right, and we are nearing the end of this presentation. So Helen will be dropping a few links in the chat to some useful tools and templates for you. One of these links is a blog post that walks through most of what we covered today. You will be receiving access to a recording of this webinar, but we won't be sending out the slides. Also note that the recording will only be available for the next month or so until our newest webinar is posted. So please feel free to reference the blog for a written record of this information. As for our critical role identification questionnaire, Helen has already shared this template in the chat. She will also be dropping a link to an article that focuses on how to fill out this questionnaire. Now keep in mind that identifying critical roles is only the first step in the succession planning process. The goal of identifying these roles is to highlight the roles that your organization should target as part of its succession plan. So we have briefly touched on the rest of that process today, and we also offer free resources that you can use in your succession process. So these resources are a part of our template library, and they are listed here on this slide on the right in green text. Helen will also be dropping a link in the chat to this template library. Take a look at the worksheets and templates if you are interested, and please feel free to reach out to us if you have any questions. We're always happy to chat. Now, to close off the presentation, I'd like to ask, what are the greatest challenges your company faces when implementing strategic plans such as succession planning. I'll give you about a minute to complete the poll. All right, so some varied challenges, um, long-term commitment, time, standardization, knowledge. Yep, these are all, all um, common challenges that we've seen as well. So I'd like to um, emphasize that you might wanna consider working with one of our consultants as we can help you to navigate your unique challenges. We have helped many clients with similar challenges, and we draw on our expertise to provide you with a streamlined process. We also offer accountability and objectivity to help you achieve your succession planning goals. So feel free to reach out if this is something that you're interested in. Now, if you are thinking that time is a major concern for your organization, and it's unrealistic for you to dedicate a ton of time to building a robust succession planning. Uh, we do have a structured process um, in our succession planning launch. So this involves two half day workshops and is a great option if succession planning is something that you don't have a ton of time to commit to. Helen will drop a link in this chat uh, to, to this program. So again, if this is something that you're interested in learning more about, feel free to browse the link or reach out to us and we'd be happy to support you. All right, and now we'll be handing it back over to Helen. Thank you, Shruti. Well, we hope that was helpful for you all. We've I've seen many times that identifying critical roles is the step that gets the most interest from readers on our site or, or clients that we've worked with. So hopefully this has been an asset to you and your talent development and succession planning. 
Um, Shruti, we have a couple of questions for you. So I'll start from the top and we'll see how many we can get through. And mm -hmm. as Shruti said, if you have questions later as you're looking at the recording of this webinar or going through any of those templates, please don't hesitate to reach out. Okay, so first question is, what if all of my roles are critical? Yeah, great question. Um, so this can definitely be um, an overwhelming process if it looks like that, if it looks like all of your roles are critical. Um, so keep in mind that you can go through multiple rounds of succession planning. So you want to prioritize the roles um, that are the most critical to your goals within your first round. So you can have a broad exhaustive list to start with, but you can also narrow this down within uh, a few rounds of succession planning. And remember that succession planning is not a one-time process. It's something that you'll be going through multiple times as needed, um, especially if there are any disruptions or changes uh, to your organization. Thanks, Trudy. Um, kind of a similar question. This one's a little particular to the template though. Uh, what if we have too many roles to fit on the critical identification, critical role identification questionnaire? Mm -hmm. Like I said, don't be shy. You can fill out as many roles as you'd like. Um, feel free to save multiple copies or print off multiple copies of the template. Um, you can start with an exhaustive list and narrow them down as you go along. Beautiful. Um, all right. How do we decide if, for example, we do multiple rounds of critical roles, how do we decide who goes in round one and who goes in round two, kind of the, the most critical of the critical roles? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This will be really dependent on your organization's specific needs. So I would recommend creating a leadership team to discuss the objectives of your succession planning process. And, um, communicate with your team about who you want to prioritize within this first round. Um, and remember, you can always come back and add um, people to the next round later on. Sounds good. Um, in terms of the form again, who should be the person who is filling out this form? Yep, so this should be the person who is um, whose role is going to be replaced or the leader, uh, the leader of a specific team. Yeah, I think we've seen often leadership um, filling out these forms, which is a, a good note to make because a lot of clients that we talk to um, think that HR should be doing most of these talent processes or succession. But um, when you pull in leaders, they will be the ones who will be able to give more information about each role that's under them that might be included in a succession planning process. So don't be shy to give this to your management team. It doesn't need to just be confined to your VP of HR. Yeah, exactly. Thank you, Helen. Uh, all right. And last question that we have. So if any of you have any other questions in your mind, don't be shy. If you're thinking it, someone else certainly will be too. Um, but the last question that we have so far is how often should we reassess which roles are critical and maybe update this template or fill it out again? Mm -hmm. Again, this will really depend on your organizational needs as well as the resources that you have available for succession planning. Um, so it could be anywhere as soon as six months to 12 months, um, or if you need more time in between succession rounds, that's totally okay. Uh, you, your organization might also be going through a change in which case you want to go through succession planning again. Um, so again, it really just depends on the size of your organization, the unique needs that you have, um, so it's it's really individual. Thanks, Rudy. All right. Well, that is all the questions that we have so far. So I'm going to zip through a couple of closing announcements and we'll let you go a little early. However, if you have a question, it's not too late. You can still pop it in and, and we'll get to it before we close. Um, but uh, before we move on, as we leave, I just want to launch a little poll. Some of you are here because you're getting professional development credits for Sherm, um, so you will know who you are. I'm going to launch a little poll here because you will need a certificate from me. So you don't need to fill this out if you don't want the completion certificate, but if you do, please just hit yes there and then I'll be able to get your full name to write that certificate and email it to you this afternoon. I will leave that up um, just off to the side here for a minute. Uh, in the meantime, I'll say if you enjoyed what you saw today, please take a look at the other webinars that we have this year. Uh, there's quite a list. I'll drop a link in the chat there. It's on the events tab of our website. 
uh, Shruti presented on succession planning today. We have some other succession planning webinars, but there's also things on talent assessment, leader character, individual types of leadership skills, those sorts of things. So feel free to explore that calendar. And if you have a burning question that you would like us to do a webinar on, shoot us an email. It's never too early to start planning for next year. Uh, so we would be happy to put together uh, pieces that are actually practical and will meet the needs of your organizations. All right, I'm going to end this poll. Close that. Okay. And then again, uh, the last thing is to please reach out to us if you have any questions. Uh, and once this webinar closes, you'll also see a link to take a feedback survey. We do go through each of these surveys and look at the comments on things that you liked, things that you didn't like, recommendations that you have going forward. Uh, so if you could take 30 seconds to shoot some, some messages in there, let us know what needs to change. Uh, we will be updating our webinars as we go to make sure that we're giving you the best that Sigma has to offer. So thank you all for joining us, and we hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you, everyone.